So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And a very, very weird technical issue right there. Seems like it had just some server issues between the ISP here in the Philippines as well as whatever Twitch wants to do. And even though it was transmitting data properly, then you know it's it's not it's if it's not going there, then that's gonna be a problem in itself. But we are back. Thank you guys for your patience. And a while ago, we just had that game between, of course, our two players. We had a bat between our two Protoss players. It was Zeng versus Inquisitor, and in the end, it was Zeng able to win it out, having the lead from the get-go, and never letting up whatsoever. So next on the list, we are going to be getting into a TVP. It's time for us to go into that Aura LE, and it's going to be interesting because Vietnam is now in a down two scenario. They are literally on the ropes, and the problem here is if Vietnam loses a single match, they are done for the tournament. So... They do need to go for a miracle run between Solomon, Justice Simon, and two strength. One Terran and two Protoss players. The Hail Mary approach here from Vietnam. Can they do it so? That's gonna be the question. Will it happen or will Malaysia be able to seal the deal and wrap things up to book a date against their Peninsula mates Singapore in the Grand Finals? Remember guys, Singapore does have that one map advantage in the Grand Finals, so we will see if they can just keep at it, get that momentum on, and win the crown outright, or will we see a redemption arc from one of these two countries? As it is time now to get into the game, Vietnam gonna be on to the red side. We do see Malaysia on the blue. Oh, that my mistake there. It's opposite, actually. It's a blue side for Vietnam. Red side for Malaysia, and let's get into this map. Welcome back, guys. We are at it yet again. Another battle between our two countries. And introducing first, here on the southeast side of that Aura LE, he is looking to wrap things up here for the side of Malaysia. It is our red Protoss, Dora. And his opponents, the Davin Penguin, is back. He is looking to do something out of this, looking to make miracles out of, well, Mint's meat that has been his fellow teammates so far. It is our Blue Terran representing Vietnam. It is Paholainen or Solomon. So looking into this game, Terran versus Protoss. And as we said before, Vietnam will need to go for a miracle run. To get something done. Solomon though winning out in his match against Crested ye yesterday. And on the other side for Chora. He was unable to win out against David Bain. So in terms of momentum. If this was where Vietnam can get the momentum back. It has to be here. It's time for them to try things out. It's time for them to figure out how to play this one out. And well, well, well. The question is. Will it be time for Solomon to bring his wisdom. And get the victory here for the Vietnamese country. But it seems like for Jota right now, he's at least looking to get the setup on. He goes for the pylon there, gateway as well as the cybernetic score as well. And in the meantime, Nexus already online here. Both sides going for the expansion. We are in the game between uh, uh, Solomon versus Jora. So let's just add things up to the collection. Make sure the stream info has all of that as well. The factory right now gonna get built online by our blue Terran so far. But it seems like here the SCVs are at work. And it is gonna be more of the tech-based approach here from the side of Solomon in this instance. He wants to get into higher tiers of tech. He wants to make sure he has all the tools that he needs against his opponents. No 3 rex shenanigans. He does want to play it defensively as well. I won't be surprised to see a macro-based game so far. But in the meantime, as the Reaper spots out this pile on the core as well as the gateway, he will have the Stalker looking to get in position there, running on around at the same time. Now, I do gotta check though if the VOD does actually have that initial game, that last game there, or it was just nothing being transmitted. But it seems like the SCVs are doing God's work and basically getting it on with the middle so far. For now, the drop gonna be in order as well. And it is time right now for the mules to get in position. One Hellion. Gonna get pumped on now. It's no dole pump here as of yet. He does want to play it defensively as we said. And those marines are gonna be pretty substantial to say the least. High time though. 
for the Orbital Command to get online. Tech Lab gonna be into play as well to add things up. It seems like, yeah, we didn't get that game onto the broadcast itself. So, highly unfortunate, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes. As it is Night Night Town for the Hellion to meet these stalkers, Jora on the outskirts. He is ready to go for the aggression here on that aura. And it's a pretty small map right now that these stalkers can run on around and go over quickly. It seems like for Jora, he at least wants to say hello to his neighbor before he destroys his opponent's home. But this is the Southeast Asia League, guys, and it seems like Blink Stalker gonna be on the list for Jora so far. Gateways gonna get built online. Blink Stalker gonna be there as well. And Jora really committing heavily on to these walkers so far. Hellion now gonna get caught on that. Solomon not paying attention, and that Hellion is just gonna be given up for free. It has done its job though. It went for the scout. It saw a few things here and there. It saw the sights, saw the sounds, and could go on retirement after the fact. But it's in the meantime, Link Stalker gonna be on the list here for Jora. There we go with the bunker though, filled up with Marines. And it's time that now to get a good mass of units here. Still a slower approach again. Neither side really wanted to do anything against one another. It seems like for Solomon, his way to go is to be building those one-off units. He does decide to get that Raven on detection as well as utility. Very, very helpful in so many ways. In the meantime, he does also have the Sea Shank playing defensively. Very good against many, many things like the Charge Lots, like the Blink Stalker, if they don't get up on top in time. But in the meantime, up time for those upgrades. Combat Shield Tech Lab here for our Terran player. And in the other side, Jora right now expanding onto the third base, and he does want to go for a push very, very soon. So it's all about the stalkers so far. And we'll see right now if Jora can add things up to his collection. In the meantime, though, here for the side of Solomon, at the very least, he's looking to go in mass. And I do like what Jora's doing right now. He he's basically going for observers and getting that info on. But with the Raven, of course, online. Sees the invisible scouts and says goodbye to that one immediately. Still, this is a lot of stalkers right now for Jora. And if Solomon is unable to withstand this storm, then he is gonna be really taking the brunt of the damage there. For now, though, the Raven gonna be in position in the first place. The shield batteries right now being built to say the least. Jora making sure he has at least one fallback plan before anything else. And it seems like these two games so far, like a while ago on Pillars of Gold, playing the macro base game, really playing it slow and steady. Same situation here, as this is our Protoss right now, looking to add things up. A lot of Chrono Reserve though, here for Chora. He can easily get the pump out of the Immortal, get some upgrades if need be. But with no Forge Online, he's going for the Charge Lot instead. Always a good sight to see, getting that Charge Lot effective, of course, against a Bio Ball, courtesy of the Terran. But here we go, we are at it again. Ready back right now, going over to the south side. Raven gonna be looking to get in position as well. And here we go with the stars right now in the middle of the map. But it is gonna be time right now to go for the push acceleration zone. Beat down. There's gonna be speed boost away from the stalkers. But at the same time, with the stim back on, it seems like for Solomon, he's able to just force those units to get the hell out of there. It's coming to a point where Jora will have to decide to get into Robo Bay Tech. Because with more and more of these Marines coming online, that is going to be even scarier to deal with against that Terran. For now, though, Zealot's going to be in behind. And in terms of production, what happened to Jora? He has, he's not building anything whatsoever. He's holding this money in reserve. He's getting some pylons. He's getting some Zealots as well. Just make sure that he will have something in bank. In the meantime, though, we are going to get plus one already for the side of Solomon. Weapons are good to go. Going for the armor right now as well as concussive shell. And after seeing so many of the Stalkers as well as the Blink, I gotta say it's a really good decision here from Solomon, getting the slow very effective in so many ways. Still though, everything is going fine and dandy for both sides. Both sides are able to play whatever they wanted to. And something to take note though is even though Jora did get that first third base on, he is behind on the worker card right now. Solomon has done a really good job at getting the lead there and getting a good influx of minerals in this game. For now though, Jora right now gonna be going over to the northeast side and at the very least looking to scout things out. Still though, you know, the macro here from the Protoss can't slip 
or he will be dead. And as I said, ha not having that Rove as of yet, very, very dangerous right now for Jora. He might be treading water, but it might be the deep end waiting for him soon. As of this moment though, Solomon is at the very least doing whatever Terran wants to do. He's going for a fort command. He's getting more and more of these units. He has 30 of these marines right now. And I can't wait to see him get even more so. SCVs though, going already to the other side. Making sure that they can at the very least get in position to go for the middle fields if need be. And it seems like there we go with a quick little drop play. And it is just on a turret to bound. Getting 5 probes. Love of the pest, but at the same time... Oh my god! All the way on the southeast. Widow Mines. Gain 10 kills. Even we were distracted about that one. Beautiful drop play. Courtesy of Solomon. And this is where he can really take a good lead. We said it earlier on. That Solomon has done a good job of keeping ahead on the worker count. And now he does an even better job at being even more so in the lead. 22 worker advantage. Jorah only up by 7 right now on the army count. But it's still scary of course when you're playing TVP. And you see that your Protoss opponent has a bigger army than you. Then that means they are ready and raring to go for the fight. For now though. Stalkers gonna be looking to get in position alongside the big bulk of units. Psystorm gonna be into play here. And I like what Jorah's doing. He realizes that he needs that AoE. So he does go for Templar Archives. And did he go for the Robo Bay as well? Yes, he did. It's onto the natural right now. So he has a lot of options to deal with a big bio ball. In any case, though, our Malaysian player, he has to wait things out a little bit. Bio Templar needs some time to get that energy. And I think the note also is without that side storm, they can't really do anything besides the feedback and a few shots here and there. You know, the day that the High Templar got an attack was a great day, that's for sure. At the very least, when you A move everything there, they don't just run in to die like what disruptors do. And even though it's just a little bit of a tickle, at least it's something to make sure that they stay in their lane. So it makes it a lot easier to control High Temp. I personally have been liking the High Temp because of that. For Jorah right now, it's all up to him to spam those T's and spam those Storms to get those hits. Weapon upgrade though, gonna be online here for the side of Pahalainen or Solomon. He just wants to get make sure that those Vikings can pack a punch against any kind of Colossi later on. Zello in this instance, Stalker's gonna get warped on in even more. And still interesting that we're only gonna get our first Colossus here from Jorah so far. 11-11 make a wish and I wish that these two guys will go for the brawl already. But for Jorah, since he's on a low worker count, he is getting a pretty big army so far. He's down by almost a thousand minerals though, in terms of the, well, in terms of the setup there. And it really just goes to show that for, for Jorah, this big ball has to work. Or he will be in such a big hole that I can, I can really foresee Solomon taking this victory. In any case, it's time for the long march. It's time for the fight. Through the acceleration zones we go. And it is going to be time to get the brawl on. Interesting enough though. No. Not too many angles here. For Jora. He's in the middle of the map so far. And these high temps are ready with that energy. But something to take note on is Solomon is ready with the Ghost Brigade. This is mighty scary to say the least. Because since we do see our Protoss player relying on High Templar, relying on energy. One EMP not only shuts down those shields, but gets rid of all the purple in that instance. The Marauder Squadron though has been spotted and the scouts have been getting taken down there. In the meantime, there we go with the drops as well. And Jorah is forced to go for the recall just to stay alive. This is going to allow, of course, our Marines to get into the brawl, into the front line. There we go with the side stun. So turning on to the Archons. And overall, a really good cleanup there from Jorah. But you can really see how Pahulainen or Solomon is making this response happen. Jorah was raring to go on the outside. He was wanting to go on the attack. And what happens there? Absolutely nothing. Because he forces a recall. He forces a response at the third base. And Jorah again has to stay at home just to make sure that he is fine and dandy. In any case, as you see these high temps ready to go. Side storms are ready to tear apart those units. But as we said before, those ghosts, these guys are good to go. Pretty snazzy to look at. And looking to just get cloaked in and maybe just maybe get in position. But something to take note though is he is not going for cloak whatsoever. No real need to get that intel game. EMP 
going to be absolutely scary if Solomon can get that hit. And I don't think he also got the psionic, the, the shockwave upgrade, so he's not going to get the biggest AoE. So he has to make sure these things hurt, these things count. And we'll find out if Paholainen or Solomon can actually get the, well, get the proper shot in the first place. Still though, 77 to 51 workers, 145 on a Protoss army count is mighty scary. But there we go with the Ghost out in front. EMPs don't go online whatsoever because those are going to be the snipers getting killed in the get-go. Still though, Vajora down below already. Waiting for something to happen. There we go with the Zealots looking for the push on over. Charge on are there. And here comes the push. Gar they're doing the Guardian Shield. So beautiful EMPs gonna be in the play. And all the sheets gonna be going on down there. But the High Templar are ready for the side storm in behind all of that. But it's still gonna be the EMP day to get on over. Probe's gonna be in behind. Archon's gonna be there as well. And for Jora, he loses a lot, but he is still ready to go. Beautiful, beautiful onslaught from Solid One. Those are the EMPs that we were looking for. And it seems like the battle here on that aura is gonna shift in favor of the Terran heavily. Who knew abilities can win games, but not in the way you would expect. Psy Storm not gonna do enough when the ghosts get the EMP online. And this is just gonna be Solomon right now looking for the coup de gras, the killing blow, and is now up on top of the Protoss there. Gone. In a blink of an eye. It didn't matter whatsoever. You saw those shields, guys? Poof! Goes the dynamite. And absolutely disappear in the first place. Solomon. Looking to herald a comeback there. And you can really feel that EMP crackle on over like static shock. This is still going to be Solomon, though. Going on the outside. And he has 97 army, 250. Double the army count right now. This is big here from our Terran player. And he is on the march to get this victory. But safe and sound right now. At least Jora has fortifications. There we go again with the EMP getting a slam on down. And my oh my. This is how you play the ghost ladies and gentlemen. Who needs the upgrades when you can just make it happen. There we go though with the blink stalkers onto the south side. But some marauders getting the damage there as well. Quick little start stuff. No courtesy of Solomon so far. These stalkers are trying to stay alive. But it's just not going to happen. One disruptor though. Maybe just maybe. This can be the Nova to end all Novas. This can be Jora getting the big blow up here for the side of Malaysia but it's too far off not gonna happen Solomon this man is ready to go yet again Nova though in the middle that is gonna be disruptor going on down so very close but Solomon doesn't care he goes for the big ball play and he is at it yet again forces the probes to go over to natural there we go with the pull instead but her stutter step is oh so strong and these workers are going down so so very easily Solomon has been mighty impressive, and ever since he got that worker lead, he has not let up whatsoever. Sure, he's gonna be losing this force, but what's coming? More of an army. Here we go again. It's time right now to get production on. And the best thing to commend about Solomon right now, he is always producing units. He is always making sure that these racks are ready to go. And Solomon has brought in the wisdom. And he is looking to cut off this map with everything he can and more. 76 workers right now. Always with the mules as well. And those are going to be the Archons going on down at the same time. Here we go right now with Solomon getting a little bit more of the push yet again. Those Archons might get caught out there. Colossi up on top. There we go with the battery overcharge. But this is too much to handle. And this is just a swarm of units from the Dominion getting the push on over. GG well played. And this is Solomon making sure that Vietnam can start things off on the right foot. Is it the comeback gonna happen? This is Solomon though, getting one more for the side of Team Vietnam. Impressive to say the least. Solomon extended understanding what to do. And he shows why he just wants to go for the 1-1-1. He uses all the tiers of tech for his utilization, for the work into this game. And my oh my, those EMPs saving the day not only for that game, but also for Team Vietnam. 3-2 to two our scoreline, Malaysia still in the lead. And well, 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 we still got two games to go on, guys. But holy crap, those EMPs. Absolutely huge from Solomon. I gotta commend that guy. Now, that was just it. Now, I understand the idea from Jora, and that big army could have been amazing, but unfortunately... A little too late there onto the Robo Bay, perhaps, and allowing those ghosts to get those hits just like that. Not gonna happen. Without those workers, you're taking a really big gamble. 
to have a big army like that. And if you're not unable, if not able to destroy your opponent with 150 proto supply, then you know that you are gonna be in for a bad time. But Solomon will get that victory. Jora in the meantime dropping on down, but there's still a big chance here for Malaysia to get this victory because our next game has to be the highlights of this set. BVT Justice Simon versus Nefarious. Those are some really heavy hitters on both sides. Gotta say, both players within the top three of their country, that's for sure. And is it gonna be Vietnam's finest right there getting the victory against Malaysia? Or will Nefarious bring in the plot to get the W and allow them to move over to the Grand Finals? It's time to move on in to our next game in just a bit. Stick around, guys. We'll take a very short break. And we will be right back for more on this lower bracket round number two matchup in the Southeast Asia League.